Power steering is power assisted by the hydraulic pressure generated during hydraulic pump operation, so the drivers may control the steering with less effort. Now, let's take a look at the structure of power steering. A power steering system consists of an oil pump, oil reservoir, hose and tube, and gearbox and the components of the gearbox are rotary valve, rack bar, cylinder tube and bead tube and tie rod. Let me explain the structure and hydraulic flow of the rotary valve. It consists of four components. In all the center of the input shaft is hollow, and the torsion bar is located inside. The upper part of the input shaft is fixed to the torsion bar with a pin, and the lower part is supported by a bush inside the pinion. The valve sleeve is fixed to the pinion with a dowel pin. Now let's take a look at the operation of power steering. Next I would like to explain the hydraulic flow inside the valve assembly. Oil flow control in the power cylinder is done by the spool valve and the valve sleeve. Without turning effort at the steering wheel, the torsion bar and rotary valves remain stationary, even though the rotary valve is stationary, the pump continues to supply fluid to the gearbox. As it enters the housing, the fluid flows to the valve sleeve center groove. The seal rings on either side of the groove confine the fluid, and it is therefore forced to flow through the frilled passages in the bottom of the group. Because there is clearance between the valve sleeve and spool valve flats, with thrilled passages, the fluid is able to flow through these passages to the center of the school valve. The fluid exits the spool center through the drilled passages where it is directed back to the pump reservoir, besides if there is no pressure difference between the right and left cylinder tubes. Power assist does not work when a steering wheel is turned. The input shaft rotates, the steering force is delivered to the pinion gear through the torsion bar, and the pinion gear begins to rotate. Its twisting motion causes the spool valve to rotate inside the valve body, although very small this rotation is enough to realign the lens and groove, as it leaves the drilled passages from the pump supply groove. The fluid is now sealed from the right turn circuit and from the pump return circuit these two pads are sealed by lens on the spool valve, which are now sufficiently aligned with lens on the valve sleeve to block pump flow all pump output, now flows through drilled passages into the appropriate groove on the outside of the valve sleeve. Once past the valve sleeve, the fluid flows to the rack piston, where it pushes against the rack piston. As the piston moves it forces the fluid on the opposite side of the piston out of the power cylinder. This fluid flows back to the gear housing and enters the spool valve through the opposite groove on the outside of the valve sleeve. Once at the school valve the fluid flows through the drilled passages to the valve center and returns to the pump, 